You are listening to the Examine Life with Bram Levinson. We react to so many things to our bodies, our thoughts, our elected leaders and the choices they make, finances, the economy, what people say to us what people say about us, what we do that doesn't get received the way we intended, what we don't do that we wish we had done in retrospect. We react to a pandemic. We react to a symptom. We react to a report, a forecast, a hypothetical rendering of what-ifs and possible outcomes. We react to those presenting possible outcomes and what-ifs. And we react to those not presenting anything. We react to change. We react to fear. We react to pain. We react to reaction. Reaction is the product of a few factors that individually or collectively are indications that we need to wake up to spark ourselves out of our slumber to wake up individually so that we can wake up collectively. Those factors are attaching to an expectation being under the constant stress and tension of cognitive distortions so that when the slightest event occurs, we snap at it because to handle one more undesirable thing makes us feel like we are going to collapse under the weight of the unwanted. And selfish desire. Attachment, as defined in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, is identification with craving which follows pleasurable experiences. We crave to repeat what has gone well in the past. When we attach to what has been, we, on a very literal level, blind ourselves to whatever goodness and value that exists in what is occurring in real time, in the present tense. This occurs as we focus on what has been, which elicits imagery and sensations based in the experiences of the past. What we focus on is what is for every one of us. So when our thoughts and energy are directed to what has been, they become what is, which leaves no room for absorbing or interpreting what exists directly in front of us. The eyes may be open, but what is seen is the projection of the mind. Attachment keeps us from the blessings that exist in the now, and they are ephemeral, and they are transient. Blink, and you'll miss them. Crave what has been, and you will find disappointment. What was, was never meant to be repeated. Life is not a video game. Reaction arises from attachment. When we are under low or greater than low level tension or anxiety, rumination or depression, our default coping level and strategies are compromised. We have less energy to expend, are more chronically tired, and have less attention to devote to the solutions that exist for every one of the problems that every one of us is faced with. When we do not alleviate this tension, we become used to it, resigned to a fate where life is meant to be lived under the weight 
of whatever cross each one of us feels we have to bear. Tension is a signal from the body to the brain asking for something to occur so that the tension can be shifted. Possible tactics to alleviate tension include talk therapy, mindful movement, meditation, listening to inspiring music or watching life-affirming films or television shows, spending time in nature, or spending time with a loved one or a pet. These tactics are desperately necessary to lift the burden of tension. Selfish desire is the basis of all suffering. We want. We want things. We want people. We want comfort. We want abundance. We want money. We want what we think will fill the bottomless pit of inadequacy we feel about ourselves, putting our faith in the power of what we want to somehow allow us to identify finally as good enough, as worthy, as winning, as desirable. And in a moment in time built around getting what we want instantly, not getting what we want becomes the poison that allows anger and aggression to manifest. Desire for ourselves alone pulls us away from ourselves, from our own goodness, our own ability to feel satisfied, fulfilled, enough. When we want for ourselves alone, we create the template for incessant disappointment. We must want for the betterment of us all, work towards that without expectation or attachment to a desired timeline within which results must manifest. Revolutions take decades, even centuries, and so we must replace selfish desire with intention, discipline, and devotion to the betterment of the collective. Reaction is bred from the aforementioned factors, independent of one another, as well as mixed together as the perfect recipe for tumultuousness and instability. Know thyself. To know thyself is to adjust thyself. To adjust thyself constructively is to recognize and acknowledge reaction reacting and replace it with a response. To deprogram initial reaction. To wedge a pause between stimulus and response. To breathe. To ponder. To restrain. To achieve. To expand. To progress. Response is the path through disparity between what we wish and what we can welcome to our tables. To fight, rename, suppress, or repress what is, regardless of how we deem its worth, invokes suffering. Make a choice to have more influence in the quality of your life. Make a choice to suffer less. Make a choice to change how you meet what previously would have been met with reaction, with response. Make a choice to move past disparity into sameness, harmony, unity, and likeness. The time, the time, the time is now. Is now.
This has been The Examine Life with Bram Levinson.